Hi, welcome to Taste This TV. I'm Chef Joe Simonero. We are on the taco hunt. And the taco hunt brings us here to Mexico in Macario Gomez, which is a small town here, as you can see. Now, over here, they're known for their fabulous, incredible, innovative tacos, which we're going to check out how they make the tacos. We're going to check out what they put in the tacos. And then we're going to feast and find out what makes this town so special for what they serve. Taste this. So I'm here with Mariana, and we're talking about what it takes to make a taco shell. Which is to actually take this, it starts off with corn flour, goes in the hopper with a little bit of water, right? Right. And then it gets molded into a round taco shell, then on a conveyor belt where it actually heats it and cooks it, and then comes right back up here, drops it in the slip, ready to be consumed. Exactly. Now what would go on here? Here you can put whatever that you want. Guacamole, chicken, pork, beef, whatever that you have in your mind, you can put on there and it's a great taco. Interesting. Here. Interesting. So just yes. put it on there and eat it up. Yes. What we're going to do is head back over there and see what else they're whipping up as far as food, so don't go anywhere. Taste this. So we're here with Sonida and she's a master chef here of this town and she's doing this incredible chicken dish that's going to be made into a taco. ¿Cómo se llama plato? Pollo pibil. Pollo pibil, which seems to be the most popular dish around here. People love it. As you can see, two big bites and he'll devour the whole taco. He's not messing around over here. It's fabulous. It's, it's fabulous. He didn't it's have to fabulous. take a third bite to tell it's fabulous. Buenísimo. But that's going to wrap it up here in this small town in Mexico that's known for their delicious, incredible tacos made from scratch. But we're not finished yet. Heading back over to the United States where we're going to whip up some more Latin cuisine. So don't go anywhere. Taste this. So I hope you enjoyed that trip uh, down in Mexico. In fact, when you want great tacos, that's definitely the place to go and get them. You, you know, from making the tacos from scratch, as you saw in that machine that looked like it was a... a very old machine, but it, it did the job, and it made us those uh, wonderful small tortilla shells, uh, which then can be later molded and fried into oil to turn into crispy shells. Um, I actually stewed some really good ribeye after I've trimmed from the raw state uh, some of the fat off, and I've incorporated it with some uh, potatoes here. Uh, and I put some sun-dried tomato pesto in there, a little bit of red wine, and I stewed this baby for six hours yesterday. And this really would go perfect on this taco. I wish I had, you know, in a half hour show, you can only do so much. But uh, stewing beefs for a long period of time uh, is actually perfect when it comes to making tacos. I've taken some uh, ground beef here, some steak, ribeye, New York strip, put it in the hopper. Now I have chopped meat, right, a.k.a. chopped meat. So what I'm going to do is saute this because I think that this is the next best thing uh, as opposed to stewing beef for long periods of time. So we have our olive oil. We're going to put that down in the pan first. Now we're going to put some uh, Latin spices in here, which you're going to do a couple of things. It's really going to release the flavor, and it's also going to incorporate itself into the oil. So now uh, it takes our cooking to a different level, right? Now we're going to add our beef. And we're just going to move our beef around a little bit. And a trick to kind of keep it from sticking and becoming a meatball is both moving it around and also hitting it with a little bit of white wine, which we're gonna do right away. The liquid will help break up the beef. Next, what we're gonna do is take some other seasonings that we have here. Now, this is a combination of garlic and onion powder flavor that's really good. And it's really gonna to add to this dish. I'm always careful about how I put in dry herbs and ingredients. This is definitely one that's good. And then I'm going to go back to some of my uh, Mexican spices as well. Of course, we have epizote in here. And I'm going to be putting that in there. That's going to change the color. That's going to change the texture, etc. I'm going to take some dried sausage here. Again, you don't need all of it. But what I'm going to do is just dice it a little bit. Because this flavor of the cured sausage here is going to be incredible. And it's going to have the salt flavor, and it's going to release it into, into the pan dish here. Now, it's really coming together, smelling incredible. You got the right amount of sauces and spices, and you can see the sauce is getting a little thick, and that's good, too. 
Now this is a grated cheese. I've used a microplane uh, to get it really, I mean, it looks like confetti. It's so thin. I did that purposely so that as soon as it hits the pot, it melts and I don't have to worry about it cooking, continuing to cook. Because what happens is when you cook cheese, it goes down into the pan and burns. So you don't want that, right? I think we're almost there. All right, at this time, you're gonna remove the spoon that you started with the raw ingredients. Just leave that in there and go to a, a clean spoon because at this point, everything is pretty much cooked down, ready to go. We're gonna add the cheese to this. We're gonna shut off the fire. And already, you could smell the flavors of the cheese. Now, I haven't added any salt, but you need to add just a little bit. Take your salt, whichever you like. I mean, it could be flavored salt if you want. This is just regular. All right, so we're gonna turn that around. Move this over to the side. This is meadow sorrel mix, and sorrel goes incredible with, with anything that's Latin flavored. Um, and we also have this micro uh, herb mix, which has uh, chevre, that has red oak, it has uh, titsai spinach. Just gonna take a little bit of microgreens, put it in a bowl. I hit it with just, just a little bit of oil. I don't want to weigh this down to make anything flat, right? A little bit of salt. And, you know, just gently with your hands, move it around. And take some of this goat cheese that we have. This is like food glue, right? Let's say we make two tacos. Right? Let's make two tacos. Put that down. You're going to take your taco and mush it right into the center of the plate. To the most opinions that are out there, I like to put my tomatoes down first. You could put sour cream if you want, but it really, I, you know, I don't like to mask any, any flavors or anything like that, so I mean, this is gonna be so good, this beef. All right, so now we put our taco meat in there. And you can see, I mean, look at the, look at the, the, the color contrast to the beef. It's got like a nice shiny flavor. Add a little bit of extra sauce there. Now we take these microgreens. We're going to put them right in the center of the taco. That's okay if they fall over because they look, real, look really nice. And then I'm going to run over here, take my microplane. I'm going to take some of this cheese and with a microplane, go right over the top. This, my friends, is a taco. Here you have the first taco. Things are gonna change on the other one. We're gonna, we're gonna now step from Mexico going a little bit to the Italian style taco. So uh, don't go anywhere, taste this. All right, so now we're gonna get started on the next taco um, recipe. Now, pancetta has always been a favorite of mine, right? What we're gonna do is take this uh, pancetta that we have sliced and we're gonna dice it up a bit. But before we do that, we're gonna take some chili oil. All I do is take some olive oil, Put some chili uh, powder in there, bring it to a quick simmer, cut it off, strain it two days later, and this is what you get. Beautiful chili oil. I'm going to put that right in there. Now the chili oil will add flavor uh, to our dish here. We're going to take our pancetta, and we're just going to kind of, I mean, you could rough dice it because it's sliced thin anyway. Once it kind of unrolls it, it'll be good. We're going to put that and onions at the same time. So. Like I said, you want to make sure that um, there's enough fat if you're not going to fry your onions first. Otherwise, you're going to be getting, you know, crudite onions, raw onions, so to speak, crunchy, which is not something that I like in my cooking. Now, next what I'm going to do is add some pears in here. Well, the good thing about adding pears with something like this that's so salty is, is the sweet and salty combination really go well. They go hand in hand together. We're going to turn the flavor up here, turn the fire up, rather. And you can see our pears are starting to cook and take on the flavor and the texture and the color now. Now, what I'm also going to do is I have some salsa here. Now, this is tomatoes, jalapenos. Um, this is some uh, onions. And I'm just going to put a little bit in there. It's going to help bring out the flavor of the dish. So if I was to put this on a taco, it could be kind of messy, right? It might fall off the taco. We talk about putting food in the taco that you know, it kind of stays in the taco. When you bite into it, it doesn't fall all over the place. So what do we do? Well, we got some goat cheese here, and this is a four pepper goat cheese. 
which means there's four different kinds of peppercorn wrapped in here. And we're going to put that in there to help tie everything. We're going to put at least half. We'll start off and see what it looks like at that point. Take it off the fire and just kind of mold everything and bring it together. Now, as you can see, you want to, you definitely want to take it off the fire like I did. You don't want to the goat cheese breaking down, broken down so much it starts to just like break up and, and look kind of nasty. This is perfect. Just a little bit. We're going to do two tacos again. All right. Now, what we're going to do is talk about a garnish on here that's both going to add to the flavor. Now, we could have taken just traditional iceberg lettuce and shaved it like every you know, Mexican restaurant or fast food uh, Tex-Mex place does, but we're not going to do that. We're going to take it to the next level here and taste this. And what we're going to do is take some lemongrass, and the lemongrass is really going to go well with this. And we're going to take a little bit of lemongrass. Take a little bit of oil. Put a little bit more oil than I did the last time. Take some salt. And pepper. Fresh ground pepper. Be generous with it. And you see what it does to the color, the texture? And you can see that the pepper actually sticks to almost every little piece of the lemongrass that's there. Now... We could take our spoon, we'll give this one more toss, and we're going to take our spoon and fill the tacos. You see how that kind of gets together? It goes in right beautifully. The pears are cooked down perfect, the pancetta, marvelous. Okay, being different, creating things every day. I'm sure you'll manage. Try putting that in one mouthful. So our second taco dish, here you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, coming up next, who's not finished yet, I'm going to make you a dessert. That's a combination of both the flavors and spices of Mexico and chocolate. So don't go anywhere. Taste this. All right, so now we're going to get started on a dessert real quick and simple. Uh, we have our spread here, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of sugar, and we're just going to mix this up. This acts as, as our, our, our paste. I'm just going to kind of mold it together. All right, now, as you can see, we've uh, mixed everything up, and right away you smell the cinnamon, you smell the sugar. Yeah, we have some dough. This is sourdough, right? So we have some sourdough. We've pushed down a little bit, molded it. We're going to take this mixture here. Real simple dessert, really good. Now, we're going to take some chocolate, and we're going to do something called shocking, shocking the chocolate which is basically with your knife going down on a big block of chocolate. Wow, it's good stuff here. And we're going to take our chocolate, put it right on the top. All right, now what we're going to do is take this and roll it. Try not to mold it too much. Kind of roll it easy. Roll it easy. Roll it easy. All right, now... I have some oil here, and I'm just making sure that it gets coated with the oil. We're going to throw it into an oven, 375 degrees, probably for about 15 minutes. Pull it out uh, and pair it with some wine and delicious coffee, so don't go anywhere. So we've taken out our dessert, uh, and as you can see, the chocolate oozing out nicely. Mmm, smell of cinnamon, the sourdough. It's really going to complement it nicely. Uh, we chose a nice Pinot Noir here to... Uh, Mm, go beautifully with the dessert and the chocolate. You want to take it a step further. Uh, we have this Ethiopia decaf blend as well, which is also pairs perfectly with the combination of cinnamon, sugar, sourdough, and chocolate. Well, thank you for watching me on this fun-filled episode of Taste This TV. I'm your host, Chef Joe Simonera. Remember, there are no rules in cooking. Taste this.